Hey everybody, welcome to Ellis Mowers. I appreciate y'all watching as always. Again, I've got my website, ellismowers.com. It's got my links to my Instagram and Facebook, YouTube, um, and my email address if you need to send me an email. There's many avenues to reach out. If you have any questions about the video, feel free to reach out as well. I'll do my best to answer them. Didn't really film a lot yesterday. Today is a Monday, and uh, it's one of those days I just kind of wanted to take an afternoon just to have some me time in the garage. Part of that, I got a push mower going, but another part of it is I got this Troy built pony out that I have, and uh, I've had it in the lean to ever since I got it. I got it in a lot of the Craftsman GT6000 and a Troy built Mustang 50 inch zero turn that I have. The zero turn I've already sold, the GT6000 will be coming up hopefully in a future video. We'll see where it falls in the queue of riding mowers. So, in essence, this mower's pretty much paid for itself already because I only paid $600 for the lot. And I've already done two trade deals, one of them the Husqvarna right here that you might be able to see beside me. I'll show it to you in just a quick second. I was told when I got this mower that it was hard to start. And I was like, okay, compression release. And uh, I tell you what, it's in, I mean, you can see it, cosmetically it's in pretty darn good shape because this is the old curved nose, three piece hood. So like none of this is broken off, which is relatively uh, rare nowadays. And it looks like it's, it was kept in a shed pretty much its entire life from what I can tell. The tires are in decent shape. Still got the original two or original tires on it, I think. So really this thing hasn't been used much at all. Um, let me show you something while we're here. Actually, we'll let the animation roll and I'll get, get started on it. Alright, so as I promised, there's the, a result of two trade deals from that Troy Built Mustang. Definitely traded up here. But um, anyways, that's why I'm saying that I don't really have any money into this anymore. Because uh, one mower sale paid for the entire lot, basically. <laughs> Excuse me. Choking on my own air here. Uh, so again, Troy Built, your pony, this is your, you know, run-of-the-mill... I went to Lowe's and bought or bought the cheapest Troy built riding mower they had. Honestly, these I prefer these over the Broncos and the Super Broncos because I am not a fan of that Vera Drive pedal operated transmission. Give me some, give me the pedal and then the gear shift on the on the um, column there, and it works just fine for me. So we got. It was a 17 and a half horsepower. I guess it still is. It's just missing the engine cover to it. Um, newer style. If, let me check. Uh, the cover's really nasty. So I want to probably guess that this is like a what a 2003 or 2004 model year. We'll check when we get down there. And I got. I'm going to take the hood off and do a valve adjustment and all that good stuff on it though. Um, the only other thing I noticed, I haven't checked the blades yet. Oil was a little low and a little dark, but it's, you know, nothing, like, ridiculous by any means. We just need to change it, and we'll be good. Ooh. Gas tank, what I did yesterday, I mean, y'all didn't miss much. I took the gas out, or I took, the gas tank was dry. Hopefully it's not dry now, because if it is, that's not a good sign. Okay, it's not dry, which is good. But there was some debris and stuff down there, and all I did was take a vacuum cleaner because I did I didn't have any gas or anything in it, so there was no static electricity that was going to ignite any fumes or anything, and just vacuumed out what what was down there. Belt. Another big thing I noticed is I'm wondering if they cut with it like this because that's kind of interesting. If they did, the deck belt is routed incorrectly, so it's a very simple routing here. It's supposed to go around that pulley and then this portion of the belt is supposed to go around this pulley which i think i'm going to have to take off that little guide there in order to make that work 
and uh yeah so that's the way it's supposed to go but i it was like routed around here and stuff it was weird um so i'll get that blades i don't know how the blades are but i can't imagine that they're terrible oh i see what happened so they they started cutting so much grass that it actually choked it and cut it off it looks like so there's a bunch of grass right there so let me do this pull it back pull that spindle back so yeah that's what happened is that the grass got caked up and clogged and i think it stopped the mower and they had issues getting it back going so it's got gator blades on it. They're in okay shape. I just have to sharpen them and we should be okay as long as I don't have one that's bent or anything. You can see there's the grass, hay, whatever it is. They got all caked up there and that's likely the cause of why they had an issue with this thing. Let me get this outside real quick. But, I want to show you all that. I want to see if I can get it around this guy in here without having to take the deck off, because that would be, a, be kind of cool if I was able to do that. Let's see. No, I'm... I'll take the guide off and the bolt just to just because their MTDs are made so tight with tolerances with guides and whatnot that uh, it just becomes very difficult. Here's one thing I can show you though. I put a good battery in it and uh, take a look at this. Actually, I think I think that's pretty typical of these for them to have that exhaust rattle. And even though even there, it didn't even try and fight me to crank up. Sometimes it would go like just get over the hump. But I am going to do a valve adjustment. I'll take the hood off and give it a nice wash down here of the valve cover and button that up with some RTV sealant, and that should be good because um, you can't really access it very well down there. Well. I might be able to access it's just a pain to get these hoods off and i don't really want to break it you know so we might just take a nice pressure washer down there drives fine these three-piece hoods like i said i don't I'm not really a fan of but hey it's a free riding mower essentially after i've done a little work to one what i am going to do it's pretty easy to do to take this belt guide and move it. So that's all I need to do is just to get this belt back on this pulley. And I might be able to if I force it enough. Ugh. No. So all it is is it's a 9 sixteenths clear out the deck under the under the side here too. I mean, deck's in decent shape, all that good stuff. So you've got a nine sixteenths. These may be halves. Not sure. One on the bottom and one on the top. I can't really see it very well right there. You just gotta loosen that up, loosen the pulley up just a little bit. We'll get the belt back on it, and then we'll give this thing a test. These decks are supposed to have a guide on this side, 
Sometimes you can get away with not having one guide. I have a guide here. The guide is the same as like the little shoot or the um, spindle cover. So it kind of is a dual purpose. So we're going to do that. This one's got the mow and reverse button too, which is awesome. And uh, see what we've got going on here. Um, let me get the right tools and I'll do my best to show y'all how I get that, get this belt back on here. My guess is that it caught whatever thick grass it did, stopped the blade and kind of screwed, jumped the belt, but that would be my best guess. It could have just been on wrong, one of the two. All right, so pardon me if I get in the way, but we're gonna do my best, I'm gonna do my best here to show you. That pulley right there, right? It is 9 16 I will put a wrench on the bottom. Uh, and a socket and ratchet on the top. Should come loose relatively easily. Oh, it's gonna wanna break my fingers off. There we go. Perfect. Now you don't have to take this thing off all the way in order for it to... You just gotta get it to the point where it's loose enough to where you can feed it over. I wonder if I get this deck belt back on and the thing to cut grass. We'll have maybe like an hour, hour and a half into this thing after I do the valve cover gas. I mean, this could be awesome. Okay, I've got it loose enough, I'm sure. All we gotta do is get it back on just like that. I've gotta get it over the deck pulley over here too. We'll see if I we'll see if I need to put that guide on the right side or not here. But now I just do the reverse of what I just did here. Smart, I'd have got my little three eighths ratchet socket or ratchet wrench. All right, so there we go. Pulleys are good. Check the other spindle. Oh yeah, awesome. So, let's see what we can do here. Ugh. Let me get it out and uh, we'll crank it up and see if it will cut grass for us now. All right, y'all, let me crank it up and get it out here and see if we got something that will uh, turn some blades for us.
be a little bent, but... good cuts good blades turn at least like I said I think I may have one blade that may be a little bent because it seems like this thing's jumping up and down a little bit I will have to double check the blades a little bit honestly I might put new blades on it just to just to see I might have that right one right there it might be bent down a little bit I don't know. Might be a candidate for new blades since these mowers are so nice. I know I've got one or two in there still for an MTD. Valve cover's leaking. I can smell the oil. I'm going to let it cool off. I'm going to go ahead and uh, jack this thing up and we'll take a look at the blades and see what we can do with them. Um, go ahead and put air in all the tires and get them up to the proper PSI. And uh, I'll meet y'all under the mower as we take the blades off and check them. All right, guys, we're looking under the mower. Hopefully, y'all can see it. The blades are straight as an arrow. They are, so I'm guessing that the gator blades are causing so much turbulence that turbulence is causing the deck to rattle a little bit. I know these MTD decks are pretty thin, so let's see if we get lucky with the 15 16 and they're able to get these things off. Oh, yeah. Nice. I'll do the other side in a second, but as you can see, I mean, this mower really was taken decent care of, thankfully, and uh, I'm excited to see that, but we've got the deck just got a little bit of leaf buildup on it, totally in good shape otherwise, though, so I'm super, very happy to see that. Um, so yeah, it's just a matter of blowing it off. I'm going to sharpen these blades and put them back on, and I think we're going to be good when it comes to, uh, the deck on this thing. I'll line it up, too, so when I get to the point where I'm going to line it up, I'll show you what I do there, because this is going to be a pretty short video otherwise. Then we'll go through the process. I'll go ahead and drain the oil out and then bring it back over in here and we'll uh, put a valve cover and stuff on it too. So um, we're getting be a quick fix here, guys. Very happy with that. Hopefully here in one day. 
let it sit overnight. I'll cut grass with it tomorrow. Sell it hopefully this week. All right. I've decided I'm going to take the front part of the hood off. I'll just let y'all sit here as I do it. I think I can take this plastic piece off without having to take the rest of the fenders off. It's a bunch of 3 8 One of them's right here. The other's on the other side. Right, those are bigger bolts right there, but we'll get to them. Got two more on top here. They are behind the hood right there. So I'll get those out while I'm here. And be careful with these because they're plastic. They screw into plastic, especially if yours has been outside and weathered any. So now the last one is two bolts on the bottom. They're either 7 16 or halves. I'll show them to y'all in just a second. All right, y'all, they are halves. So what I'm gonna do, pull this up. I'm gonna stick the wrench down in here for it. And then I'm gonna come on the top side, or on the bottom side, excuse me. Don't do this when the muffler's really hot, i.e. after you run it. All we needed to do right there. Get it out of the way of the muffler. All right. Well, let's see if it'll just happen on the other side like that. No, nah, you need the wrench. Tight spaces, y'all. All right, let's see if that works. So I'll hold it while we do this. It's easy to come out when you get the premise of it. Let's see if this thing will just fall off, fall out. Maybe not. Trying to be easy with it because. Oh. You got two more on the top here, guys. I forgot those. One of them is right there, and the other's right on the other side. So let me get those last two out. It's like eight bolts just to take off a nose cone here. I want to take take a Craftsman hood off or a newer MTD hood. Off. About what? Thirty seconds. <laughs> so, all right. So this is gonna 
So the headlights and stuff are going to come with it. So I need like four hands here. Um, give me a second. All right, so now take this bolt off here. Okay, that's okay. That should come off. Just set that up there. Set this over here. Now we have access to our valve cover, which you can see is leaking mighty bad. So we'll get that all cleaned up and uh, get inside the valves and adjust them and get them all set, squared to go here next. All right, y'all. When it, so whenever I do one of these. Uh, valve adjustments I get it up tilted back and the blades I sharpen by the way and put back on so I'll tilt these back put them aside Put all the hood bolts on one side. This gasket's leaking like a sieve. So we'll get that cleaned up. Look at how clean, I mean, just look at how clean the valve train is in this thing. Just super nice. I do need to let it cool off a little bit before I really adjust the valves because you're supposed to do it on a stolen cold engine and this one's had a little bit of heat in it. Um, but we can still check the clearances so let me grab let me grab a valve tool and see man that's a hot engine just for the couple minutes that I ran it. <laughs> the valves are hot but the muffler's not that's kind of funny. Looks like somebody's been in it because this muffler bolt's been replaced. So, and then the back cover bolts are also missing. So that kind of is a sign that somebody's tried to work on this at some point for whatever reason. The thing started right up for me. But let me grab the valve stem tools and all that mess that I need, and we'll adjust the valves, and hopefully we'll be good after that. All right, guys, let's see where we're at on this thing. So what I usually do is when one's in, the other's out. So we're gonna, all right, so I've got the, that's the intake valve that's in right now. So we'll check the exhaust. I believe the exhaust is supposed to be between three and five. And uh, even, even on a warm engine, it's over five thousands because the, it's uh, feeling right in there filing right in there and, you know heat expands things so the valve clearances should get a little bit tighter as the engine warms up so it's not I don't think it's terribly far out but we do need to get it in some so loosen the little 20 I think it's a t20 and then move the 10 mil Um, nut in with a wrench and then after you do that you just tighten it back up double check things still a little bit on the loose end so we'll do it one more time and Briggs engines are known for the valves getting out of adjustment like this so so that's four thousands that need to come out just a little bit I mean, just a tiny bit. It's such a fraction. 
Okay, I bet the five won't even get in there. The four is good, so between three and five. Like I said, the four slid right in there. The three. Oh yeah, so that's right on the money. I think the end takes between five and seven. As long as you get between about three and seven, you're pretty good. I usually go about five. Remember, I can go just a tiny bit tighter. Oh, well, I don't even know what what that is yet, so let me check before I move anything. Let's get the, let's get the exhaust valve in on. Turn over. There we go. Hell. So I'm in an awkward position with this hood right here. Mm. Alright, there we go. Probably just turned it backwards and it would have been a lot easier than that. But. Here at Ellis Mowers, we do things the hard way. Okay, let's check it. Let's see what five thousandths. This one might not even need to be adjusted, y'all. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's within spec, so that's great. I mean, I could just barely knock it in just a like the smallest amount but I'm talking like not even like a millimeter I mean it is tight four let's see if we can get the four in there still I don't think I went too far Earl. just in that little bitty adjustment yeah I did I went a little bit too far so we'll adjust it back out to where it was. Call it a day on this. Okay. I mean, it is just so minuscule. I want to get it. You always want to get it like perfect, but I mean, the five is barely fitting in there. So the seven, I'm sure will not. Yeah, we're good. So all I'm going to do is get a scraper. Because all the gasket came off, came off of it on the valve cover itself, which is awesome. So I'll take the valve cover over here, scrape it off, and just kind of go over it with a wire brush, come back with some RTV sealant, and just throw it right on there. And then we will go and let it sit overnight. <laughs> and then we'll wash it tomorrow before I put everything back. Well, I might put everything back on it before I wash it, but you see how bad it was leaking down here, so getting some smoke and stuff on the valve cover and all that good stuff, so yeah. All right, let me do that, and uh, I'll show you the finished product of putting me putting it back on, and then I will uh, see you tomorrow after that. All right, I got that thing prepped, and I'm just going to spray a little bit of brake cleaner oh come on give enough to me please yeah, that's probably good enough brake cleaner wise spray that on there i'm going to get rid of some of this extra oil residue wipe this thing clean 
we're gonna wash this and make it nice and pretty after we put the valve cover back on it so don't worry about that all right we got everything nice and clean let me get the bolts back that way we can just slap this thing on and call it a day And this is made in 04, by the way, so I was right on the year. These uh, Troy Bilts, I kind of know when they changed the hood design and stuff, so I can pretty much guess the year pretty regularly. Because they made these style hoods with the old style, I call it the old style um, MTD. Frame and the new style. This is the new. I call it the new style because it's got the the side lever for the blade engagement as opposed to the one that's on the side of the front fender that you lower down to the height that you want, and then you pull it all the way up for the height to uh, pull the height all the way up, and then it moves the deck physically backwards. MTDs like the uh, I don't know. BMW of lawnmowers. They over engineer everything. <laughs> so. Alright, that should be good. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and put the hood back on. When I when I spray this thing tomorrow, I'm gonna wash it off. And I'll just wash it through the hood where I've got the honeycombs and stuff in that hood. I'll be able to wash it, wash around it good enough and wash under it to get all this dirt and mess off of it. Uh, ooh, this one's got a Walboro carburetor on it. How about that? Uh, I can tell by the, see the little narrow solenoid switch there? I can tell because of that. Let this sit up. I'll go ahead and get the hood buttoned up. And uh, we will put this hood back on, and uh, I'll catch y'all tomorrow. All right, guys, so MTD in their infinite wisdom, so to speak, decided on this model to put the drain plug right where the steering rod comes through for the drag link and so you have a little bit of a tight access some people make tools and like have a reverse socket end or whatever I just got a vice grip really tight and I was able to have the wheel turned a little bit to the right reach in here and able to break it loose just like so so now I'm gonna release the vice grips ah man I had to have them on there really tight so There we go. You gotta have them on there really tight so it doesn't slide around the this. But I'm gonna pull this drain plug off, get this oil pan in. In where it needs to be. So it's just gonna obviously go everywhere, but hey, it's better than why I don't do this on the garage, so just hang tight for a second. I'll deal with you all. Some people put like little cereal box things right here, but I just I just let it drain out. I just use brake cleaner. So I'll let that drain out and then I'll cut the grass. I don't know why they couldn't figure out a better design for that as opposed to because it just doesn't really make a ton of sense but we'll let it drain out i've cut the grass hopefully fingers crossed uneventful and uh give us a nice cleaning and then we'll be done with it 
Alright guys, well there's some resale red for you. How about that? Cleaned up extremely nice. Again, it wasn't terribly dirty anyways. The back wheels were a little dirty. Sprayed it with, sprayed off the pressure washer. It's still a little wet, but uh, man did it turn out good. It's definitely one of the cleanest mowers that I have had this year. You can tell that it was garage kept or um, shed kept or, you know, kept under a shelter and all that good stuff for pretty much its entire life because it, uh, really really looks good somebody's already gone in and it'll cut in reverse no matter what so they've taken the reverse switch off which is which is fun um and actually it's like an older mower and most people will that's actually a deal breaker for most people that's why a lot of people let me actually show you the mower that's why a lot of people don't buy these little ponies anymore because you don't get to cut in reverse unless you disconnect the uh, reverse switch back there Really, the only cosmetic flaw is that's missing the Briggs sticker on it, the 17 and a half horsepower, but I don't think anybody's going to knock me on that. Just cut my yard with it. The belt didn't slip off, nothing crazy or abnormal. So um, the blade just, or the deck just moves around a little bit more than I remember most MTD decks moving, but uh, I mean, it cut level, it cut fine. So let me crank it up for y'all and we will take it for a ride. I hate these exhaust shields on these things. That's what makes that noise. And I put a shutoff switch on it because I think it's got the Warlboro carburetor on it. And once those get age on them, they start to leak a little bit into the crankcase. I think this one was just barely leaking. So I'm going to tell whoever, I mean, it's much better than me replacing the carb on it because you can hear all, how well it runs. Just tell the person whenever they stop using it for the day, just to turn that valve and you're good to go. So, transmission works good, deck works good. We'll take it for a lap. Put it in forward. There we go. Blades. You might can see the deck moving a little bit. But you gotta remember this is an entry level ride car, so. And I kept it in the uh, shed for a couple weeks because I was going to fix fix and finish this. Uh, I'm waiting on the belts for that big zero turn. So y'all see that coming up. And I was going to finish that Murray, but I ended up having to need a deck spindle. Because I was thinking, based on the description that he was telling me, that I was going to have to put a, a um, camshaft in this. But I did not. Just need a little bit of a valve adjustment. And uh, works well. I think... I think the reason why these are a little bit harder to start because it seems like every Troy built pony that I get starts like that. And I don't I don't understand. The only reason why I think it might do that is because um, the battery cables are much thinner on these than there are on um, 
Craftsman mowers, and so there may not be as much, uh, I guess you'd still get 12 volts. There may not be as many amps getting from the battery to the starter, which uh, might explain it. Because I had one exactly like this last year that I did some work on, and um, it was doing the same thing. It was, it had to get over the hump. I think that one had a little bit of a worn camshaft. And this one might have just a tiny bit, but it's nowhere near enough to tear into it. I mean, um, it, I mean, it has started right up for me ever since I got it out of the shed. So, um, list price, 2021 here, depending on when you're viewing this video. I'm going to list it for $550. If it was prime season, I probably would list it for $600. But since it's... I'm filming this in August, y'all will see that this later on down the line, just because I have to supplement the winter where I don't have any snowblower videos for y'all, because I don't really get enough snow down here to warrant people getting one. So, here in August, trying to sell it for $550, we will see. There's not really a lot of people looking for mowers at this point in time, but the grass is still green and growing pretty good. Probably got about till the end of the month before things really fall off. Um, so we'll see it. I'll take five for it. I don't want to take any less. I know it's worth that. Um, so let me know what y'all think of these. These cheaper MTDs, I have a seven speed, seven speed transmission instead of that cheap pedal drive. I like these so much better. I'll take a Pony over a Bronco any day of the week when it comes to uh, MTD stuff just because they're they seem to last a little bit longer and have a little bit more durability than those Broncos, especially because this has got a Briggs and not one of them Kohler Courages. So let me know what y'all think about these Troy Bilts, um, these ponies especially. Uh, you know, for a cheap riding mower, they're all right. Obviously, I'd take a Craftsman, but uh, it cut my yard really well. I was pretty surprised. But thank you all again for watching. Thank you all for the support of the channel. As always, uh, we keep growing the channel. It's doing great. And uh, I've got my website now, ellismowers.com. Still a work in progress, but it is there, and it has links to my Instagram, Facebook, as well as my email address if you need to reach out to me or have any questions about any repairs that I have done to this mower. So thank you again for watching, and I will catch you on the next one. See you then.